I would say that it's a, a network full of poetry, where uh, images meet uh, with sound and unexpected forms come to life. It combines two of my favorite uh, pastime activities, watching films and music. To have a platform with new movies is much more interesting because a lot of these old uh, silent movies are already done by a lot of musicians in different festivals and it doesn't have to look like black and white. You can uh, use the technique of today and do a silent movie. What I liked most about silence is the atmosphere and the collaboration, all the nice people and the different styles of music and films of course, varying from classical music, which was purely acoustic, to electronic artists and a jazz trio. It is something uh, that connects art. It is a nice platform where so many different people can uh, have, actually even on the same film, uh, can have so many different approaches and so different variations. It's the meeting between uh, musicians, live musicians, local musicians, with uh, a network of uh, directors. So it's interesting that these things are brought together, connecting, let's say, the local with the kind of a more European or more international, I don't know, aspect. Moving Silence is a very young initiative. We founded Moving Silence uh, in 2009. And uh, from then uh, we did several events. We mix many cultures, many countries, so there are a lot of ideas coming together. With the Goethe Institute, for instance, in Athens, we produced since the year 2011 uh, a festival that lasts four to five days, and we show various thematic programs and also include different spaces throughout the whole city of Athens. I really enjoy the time, the past uh, three years, of the Moving Silence uh, performances. When the audience is very tense and anxious to listen for the first time, the sound or the music that is produced for a, a new silent movie, this is a very, very special moment, every time. There were uh, quite a few mu musicians uh, who had uh, some sort of handmade uh, musical instruments and they played uh, experimental music, they accompanied the films. The instruments looked like installations, they didn't look like musical instruments. That was a really good experience for me. A movie, which is a recorded thing, becomes alive thanks to the live performances of the musicians. We invited many musicians and all of them were completely different from one to the other and they were all able to give a very special touch to the movie. It can be able to even change somehow the intention of the movie. The live music helps seeing, uh, viewing the film uh, differently. It's a new synthesis that comes out that is separately from the film, or watching the film by itself or listening to the music. And it brings you uh, in a situation where actually uh, by this separation uh, to, to see each form at the same time, like each medium helps you to uh, see uh, the other separately and, uh, and watching the procedure, what is actually then picture, what is actually music. Filmmaking was progressing extremely quickly uh, as far as grammar and sophistication of the audience. And as soon as sound came in, it collapsed. So it was as if an art form was just finding its footing and then it got overtaken. So rather than continuing to develop a language where the audience knew what was happening through visual cues, they just resort to a simple dialogue. So in that sense, the film lost its poetry or lost its subtlety. And the audience stopped growing and the filmmaker stopped growing at that point. We say like uh, cinema was silent and was waiting to became a sound cinema. Actually, this is not true, because sound cinema has a different aesthetic, a different way to relate with its audience. People need to listen, but also to see people speaking, because the magic of sound films, even from the very beginning, was seeing the actor speaking and hearing the words synchronized with their lit movement. Instead, a silent film 
it completely free from this kind of slavery uh, because uh, the only authority he responds to is the eye. The image gives you a path. It opens a, a world for you. It's a very, very nice procedure for me. It challenges my imagination. I think it's a great era to harken back to, and I think it takes a little time for audiences to get used to it, because in a way it's demanding more of the, of the audience, as if they're sophisticated enough to read the images. There are the filmmakers, then music artists are coming and saying, OK, I want to take this film, I want to make my music to it because I have a connection to it. And this process I have never experienced before. I, I like it very much. I just let my movie go free and uh, I really want to know what the musicians do with my film. In every festival there will be different people that will give another aspect of what you have done. I think that contemporary cinema needs something like moving silence because um, if we want to revive silent cinema or to try to find a place for it in the contemporary age, it is necessary to have people creating a link between the uh, normal status of the audiovisual entertainment, which is centered around some films, and a consciousness of the different way of expression that silent film can achieve. It's refreshing, it's challenging. Myself, I, I will not be able just to work isolated. I really want this exchange. So any platform that comes and uh, pushes me a little bit, like, uh, you know, shakes me, like, from a, from a different perspective, a different way of working, uh, it's great. I don't know other networks that are working on contemporary silent films today. And this is a, a very important responsibility to moving silence to open a path and to create a network between individuals and associations that could be interesting and interested in uh, uh, joining this kind of project. Thank you.